Hello, this is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 13 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. In the last episode, we talked a little bit about um, uh, fixing uh, some errors that we've encountered and, and how to resolve those and doing updates to Joomla, and uh, probably most importantly is doing a backup of your website uh, or websites if you have many of them. Now, uh, I probably mentioned this in the last episode. If not, I don't want to say it again now because it bears repeating. A backup of your website is absolutely useless and of no value if you don't test it. So that is part of the part of a regimen and mentality you probably should take upon yourself. So um, so look, there there are many reasons that you back up a website. You know, it's for data integrity, or maybe you're testing something, or want to test something, and there's all kinds of reasons, right? But uh, you know, making the backups not enough. Uh, you know, backup uh, uh, is not a backup at all unless you test it. I know that I've just said that, but it, like I said, it's it's very important to uh, lock that into your brain. So um, in the last tutorial, I demonstrated how to do a full backup of your Joomla website uh, using an extension called Akiba Backup. I showed you how to you know where to get um, the extension, how to uh, install it, and where the backup files are actually stored in the Joomla um, file tree. Uh, you know, and you should probably use FTP if you've got a remote server or, or a local copy if you're working on your dev server and keep those backups in a safe place. Um, so at this point I'm assuming that you've already have a backup and it needs to be tested. Uh, if you don't have a backup please go back and see episode 12 um, uh, to catch up and then come back and join us here. So we have a backup of our Joom Dev uh, site, and we want to uh, we want to test it. Now, obviously, we probably don't want to do the restore in our live site, or in this case, our development site. In case something is wrong with the backup, then we end up with a broken system. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the approach. We're going to create an additional virtual host to hold the um, backup for us, or to test our backups. Um, and this is something that I frequently do, just to make sure that a backup is good. So um, let's uh, let's get started. So we're going to create a new virtual host. So I'm going to press Control Alt and T on my keyboard to bring up a console. And let's uh, make this a little bigger here. All right. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is remember um, during the LAMP tutorial we created a virtual host and that the virtual host files are stored in the sites available folder under uh, the Apache 2 folder. So we're going to navigate there by um, entering CD for change directory. We want to go to Etsy, Apache 2, sites available. Okay. And now in this uh, folder, if we do a list, we see that we have our joom.dev and, uh, and the, the default configuration files for the sites. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna save ourselves some uh, time. We're gonna just copy the joom.dev file to another f uh, file, and we're just gonna modify that. So I'm gonna issue a sudo uh, copy cp, and the file we want to copy is joom.dev.conf. By the way, I'm using the tab key to complete uh, uh, lines. Uh, if you're not aware of that, and we're gonna copy this too. We're gonna call this. I'm gonna call it backup. Dot dev, so that's my backup.dev server. And remember, these files always have to end in the extension conf. So we do that. We'll do a list to see that it's there. Okay. So now um, let's um, uh, take this file that we've copied from joom.dev and let's just make some quick changes to it. I'm trying to save some time here. So I want to do a sudo nano, and the file that I want to edit is backup dot dev dot conf. We'll open that up and everywhere in here that I see Joom I'm going to replace this with backup. So backup dot dev is going to be the name of the server um, www dot backup dot dev will be the alias and then we'll create a folder on our desktop just like we did for um, our Joom dot dev site and we'll call this backup dev and this is where it's physically located again. And this is backup dev. And then finally, we need to come down here and add some information about 
um, the error logs and the custom log. So we'll replace Joom with backup dot dev and finally this one. Okay, so we've made all the necessary um, changes to this file. So now we're going to uh, hit Control X to exit. Yes, we want to save the buffer, and that's the file we want to save to. And we can verify that uh, change if we want to do a cat. We see that all those changes that we made to the file are there. So the next step is um, we need a, a folder. Uh, to keep it on. Remember in this file we said it was going to be on the desktop so let's make a directory uh, from my home folder the desktop and then we're going to call this backup dev just like we said we would in the config file and we see that over here you see that that showed up. We could have right clicked and created a new folder there too however you want to do it. Um, and now finally we need to enable the site so we need to sudo a2 for Apache 2 we want to enable en a site and the site we want to enable is our backup.dev.conf okay and it says that in order to um, activate the new configuration we need to run uh, reload so sudo Apache 2 oops I messed that up service Apache 2 reload. Now reload is different than a restart. Reload just simply reloads the configuration files that Apache wants to use. We could just restart it too and that's usually what I do but we'll do it this way. Okay now remember uh, Apache has to figure out a way to get a friendly name to an IP address and we have to have some sort of name services for that and uh, our solution last time since this is a local development uh, environment that we edited the host file. So let's edit that now. sudo etsy and that's hosts. Oh, psh, see that? sudo nano etsy hosts. And then we're just going to add another line here 127.0.0.1 which means local loopback. And we want to add www.backup dot dev that's how we're going to uh, refer to it and backup dot dev that's a short name so we have that so we can exit that with control X yes we want to write the buffer and enter to write to that file so that takes care of that so now um, we'll create a test file that we can load up uh, to make sure that uh, our virtual host is working so I'm just going to do a touch touch creates a file um, creates a file on the file system without actually putting any data into it so the file that I want to create is uh, in my home folder desktop backup.dev and we'll call this index.html all right so that should be there so now um, let's uh, let's edit that file so I'm gonna nano edit this file and the file we said was on desktop backup dev index.html so we're just going to create a simple HTML file here HTML let's close the tag because if I don't I'll forget and uh, so we have a head and Close that tag. We'll create a title here. And in our title, we'll put um, oh, backup.dev test. Okay, and we end the title. All right. And then we need a body tag. And we'll close that. And, oops. Well, we'll put a header two, backup testing site, because this is where we're going to test our backups. 
And, uh, you know, look, if watching me type the stuff is boring or something, I'm sorry. Sometimes I think it just, it's helpful to me to just do it. Uh, and and maybe not for you guys to watch it, I don't know. But I, I get a little more out of it. If it drives you too crazy, just let me know. So uh, we'll put a little paragraph here. Uh, this is a test of the backup.dev site for backup testing. Eh, that looks good. Okay, and we ended our body, so we're good. So we'll save this file, control X, yes, and enter. All right, so now really the only thing we need to do is test and see if our work is good. So we're going to open up the browser. Maybe. Today. Okay, and we're going to go to backup.dev. Oh, and we didn't get it. So let me uh, let me see what I've done, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I figured it out. Actually, it was just sort of a dumb thing. You know, I went back in here and I checked my um, sites available um, file to make sure it was right. Uh, went into uh, www.backup.dev and it worked, and then went back to backup dev and it didn't. And then uh, I hit F5 and it popped up. So what happened? It was actually that the uh, browser had cached the default site um, when I was doing some testing. So that's why the default site come up. So um, th that was the problem. Um, maybe I should have uh, left the video recording so that you can see me walk through the, the troubleshooting. But again, I'm trying to trying to keep this stuff a little bit short. So uh, now that we have our um, backup uh, testing site uh, configured and uh, as a virtual host and available to us in our web browser uh, we can now uh, do a, a site restore so let me exit out of this terminal so the um, piece of software that we're going to use uh, as part is another part of the Akiba suite and it's called kickstart so to get that we're going to go to akiba.com K-E-E-B-A dot com if I didn't lie to you well let's do this HTTPS colon slash slash Okay, sorry about that, guys. I was interrupted. Anyway, we need to go to Akiba's website, which is https colon slash slash www.akibabackup.com. And then on the main page of the um, Akiba website, we want to go and click on the Akiba Kickstart. And then we come to the download page and we want to download the core 5.00 now if you watch this uh, later this could be uh, a higher number that's fine we just want to simply download this and save the file shouldn't take but uh, a couple seconds to save the file so now if you haven't changed your default locations for Firefox if we open this up <clears throat> we'll see in the downloads folder the Kickstart Core 5.00 or whatever version of it that you um, had downloaded. So we're going to extract this file. So I'm going to say extract here. And we're going to take a look in here and we'll see there are several files that are actually extracted and created. And uh, most of them ending in .ini. These are language files for it. So really the only files that we need to make this work are the jQuery minimum, the JSON2 minimum, and the kickstart.php file, and the specific file language file um, uh, for for your language. So in my case, it's English. So I'm actually going to come over here. And I'm just going to remove this stuff because I only need the four files. I want to make sure that I leave the English file. So I'm just going to delete that and come down here. Make sure that I leave my two jQuery files and my kickstart file and I'm just going to remove these other language files so again just to recap you only need four files to do the restore you need the JSON and jQuery um, JavaScript files the key, the kickstart PHP file and your specific language file 
Now to do the actual restore we're going to have to have these four files and then um, also in our downloads folder we will have the site backup JPA file and then these need to be all copied into our backup dev folder on the desktop. So um, I've navigated here to the backup dev folder uh, in Nautilus so I'm just going to remove this index.html file. We don't need it anymore. We've done those, we, you know, we've done that testing. So in the Kickstart core, I'm going to select these four files here, and I'm going to copy them and paste them over there to the backup.dev folder. And then I'm going to grab the site file. You know, you might have it on a thumb drive or or somewhere in a network storage location. We're going to copy this and we're going to paste this one over here too. So that's uh, really all that we need to do as far as preparation, except that we need to create a database for our um, soon-to-be-restored Joomla website. So I'm going to come over here, and we're going to come over to uh, joom.dev, PHP my admin, and fire that up. And remember, we have maximum error reporting turned on, so you might get some crap like this. We're just going to scroll to the bottom and say ignore all. We're going to log into PHP My Admin. Remember, the username is root, and then whatever password that you set that uh, when we installed LAMP. So I'll enter in mine. Oops, I think I fat fingered that. And now we simply just need to create a database. So we can uh, click over here on databases. And we can enter in a name. I'm going to call mine Akiba Test, or you can call it Backup Test, or whatever, as long as it's a unique name. And create that database. And with the database created, we can go back in now and and uh, start the restore process. Now this is actually pretty simple. Let's see, we can log out of this, and we're done with the Akiba site. So we're over here at Backup.dev, and we're going to. Enter in uh, backup.dev slash kickstart.php. That will launch the, if you recall, that will launch this kickstart.php file, which will start the extraction process and everything. So we'll, we'll jump into that now. So when we load this, should pop up. Machine's acting a little bit slow. So there's, uh, pops up a little dialog that says, hey, these are some of the things that you should know about Akiba Kickstart, yada, 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 read that. So you can click here or press escape to close the message. So we're going to close that. So the first part here, um, you can uh, look in, it will look in an archive directory by default. It's going to look in the directory that the Kickstart file was um, loaded in. And then you can select, uh, if there are more than one archives in the folder, you can select the drop down here and select the archive that you want to extract. And then uh, the section two is, you know, where you select an extraction method. You can use uh, FTP or, or local. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to um, the hybrid. So it just allows it to work the way it wants to work. And then finally, we're going to scroll down here at the bottom and hit start. So this will extract the archive, that JPA file, and write all the files to the disk. And then once it's done with that, we have the op opportunity to run the installer. So we'll click that button. And we'll have a few screens here where we need to um, supply some information. So here we look for the pre-installation check. These are all good. Some of these um, uh, will be warnings, but simply because we're in a, in a uh, in uh, test environment and development environment we have this stuff turned on so it's just notifying that of us and we scroll down here um, gives you the information about the backup that we're restoring when it was taking where it was taken from you see this was taken from our Joom dev site and the Joomla version that we're running okay and the PHP version that it was running under and uh, once we're good with all this here we just hit next and then finally we have to give some connection information so the local or the database server well everything's running on this machine so this is local host if I uh, can type that in there correct the username this is the this is root and then of course the password that you used when you set up lamp and then the database name remember we said was Akiba underscore test if I remember right um, the advanced options we have the option of um, 
of dropping uh, tables if they exist or do a backup or whatever by default it wants to drop it it will pick up the database prefix from the archive file so we're good here and then you can change the fine tuning if you want but generally you can leave, leave all the stuff as default we're going to hit next it says uh, warning the database password contains special characters so uh, on mine um, uh, just tells you to use at your own risk I, I've got special characters in my password so I'm going to hit OK and accept that warning and then we get this little dialog that shows the database restoration process, progress. So here it's saying that it's going to take about 57 seconds. This is, um, I've seen this stuff go quick and I've seen it take a long time depending on the kind of database that you have in your Joomla installation. But generally it doesn't take too awful long. So we'll wait that out. It's taking longer than I thought though. Of course this machine is being a little bit taxed, we're recording the screen and a bunch of other stuff at the same time. Okay, so now that the uh, we've got a message here saying that the database restoration was successful, we can go to the next step. The next step allows you to change the site parameters if you want to. By default it will pick everything up that was in the uh, live site or the site that you've done the backup. So we're going to leave all that the same and hit next. Ah, we're almost there. Alright, so at this point um, we can close this window and then we can tell it to back over here we can tell this to clean up and then we simply can uh, it will clean up the uh, the kickstart files the the files that we copied over there and then we have the option of visiting the front end and that should look familiar or we can visit the back end but the point is that we should be able to come back here and log in just like we did with the original um, uh, website. So that's really all there is to um, uh, restoring a website. Um, there's some videos available from Akiba if you want to see that. Uh, we can uh, um, you can tweak it a little bit if you want to. But notice here that uh, since I've uh, since I've restored this website we see that there's some updates available but this is a backup so we're not going to worry about that but you know what while we're here we might as well uh, go into our live site our development site joom.dev administrator log in the back here and mine was admin admin and it should pick up that there's updates to be done so we see that 3.62 is available. We'll go ahead and tell it to update. Just click the Update Now button. And we covered this last time uh, in the last episode, so this should be a review. We're going to install the update. And it tells um, it says that the download of the update package failed. Hmm. Well, I have to investigate that. It could be my network connection. It seems to be a little flaky today. So, yeah, that's, that's going to fail. So anyway, uh, in your own time, um, Go back and and update your site, uh, any extensions that you got going on, and go from there. So anyway, uh, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope that uh, some of the mystery of of, of doing a restore on a um, on a backup of your site has been dispelled. I'm sorry for all the interruptions. It's quite a busy day today, as you notice. That uh, I try to get these out about once a week, and and um, this this one's a little late. It's been pretty hectic. Uh, trying to find a little spare time. Uh, if this has been helpful or if you got questions, you can always go to myheap.com and from the main page go to Technology Exploring Joomla 3 and any new episodes will be up here listed in the episode guide. Uh, this is part of the development tool series, Restoring a Backup. Uh, you can download uh, the site and you can watch the video from here. If you have questions, just use the contact link here fill out the information and the capture information and send me an email and I will do my best to answer it or if you prefer you can if you're watching this through the YouTube channel uh, which is YouTube well you obviously know what it is you're here uh, or if you're watching it from the website it's youtube.com slash C slash oops my heap and you will find them here you can go to the 
video and post uh, comments under the video or questions and like I said I'll do my best to help you again I am uh, will apologize for the erratic nature of this video it's been kind of crazy I'm thinking uh, from this point we're gonna go back to our module development and uh, carry on with that um, so in the meantime have a blessed day